All right, it's now 13 hours later. It's been snowing all night. Here's the railing on my back porch. So, what's that, three inches of snow last night? Let's go down and look at the turbine. Okay, it's gusting at what I would say are proper winds for this area. Um, I think I just looked at the, the anemometer there and I was getting up to 15 miles an hour. So that's pretty good. And we can see it's actually spinning. So that's also good. <laughs> a little wobbly up there because it's a little unsupported, but it's working. You might not hear any wind noise on the microphone because I have a proper microphone cover so I don't get any wind noise. Uh, here's my cell phone for comparison. Okay, that's enough of that. Let's go inside and see how many volts it's making. Now, if it's making above 12 volts, then we can actually like use it to charge a battery. But if it's under 12 volts, like on average, even this weather, then it's not even worth having up. So I'll have to take it down. The, the motor is not suited for those blades. And normally it would go that if you have less blades, and I only have three, then it will be a faster spinning turbine meant for heavier winds. <gasps> Light switch. That's really going right now. All right, now we can see how many volts. I'm just using this for volts right now. It's not connected to a load and you can see <laughs> it dies off when it's below six volts apparently we're in the lull of wind right now and it comes on strong so it was, it was bouncing I saw up to like 15 volts for a moment there let's just watch and I'll, I'll cut out the boring stuff There we go, 15, 13. So when it's really, really blowing out there, this would be suitable for trickle charging, I imagine, uh, a lead acid battery. I'll hook my, my proper charger up to this and see what it does. I mean, it's a, a proper charge controller for a lead acid battery. Well, it's still gusting to 15, almost 20 miles an hour. <clears throat> And, well, it's in the middle of a gust right now. It's not making any power. Uh, sorry. So you can see it's not making many volts. That motor is just not wound properly for this application. Uh, probably needs to spin about twice as fast as what it is to be useful. And that's kind of why I wanted to use the hoverboard motor. Um, sorry, it's upstairs right now. I don't, I'll show you that later. You can see the hoverboard motor being used in uh, a video I'm going to link up here. And that was uh, just being held against my water wheel. And it produces volts at much lower RPMs. Which, which is far, suitable, far more suitable for this size wind turbine. So I'm just going to sit here for a little bit and see if it actually makes any power whatsoever. I'll have a, a link to this guy in the description. It's meant for solar, but it does work for other um, more active loads like a wind turbine. Or in my case, I had previously hooked it up to uh, my water wheel, which is right there. While we're watching this, waiting for it to maybe make some power, let me explain what I could do with this motor. Uh, the first is uh, a buck boost converter. And those suck because you lose some efficiency and you're current limited on the motor side. So even if you increase the voltage, your current 
on the motor, you know, you can make 5 volts at 10 amps, but 10 amps is the maximum for the motor. So that doesn't work too well. I could do gears, like I put gears on that water wheel, but it's better to not have more mechanical functions than you need. So it's just better to have a, a motor that's suited for the wind power. So just so you guys see what I see, it's just barely hovering around five, six volts. And wow, you guys can't see anything there. You can see it's spinning. And it's making six volts, seven volts. So it's spinning pretty good. Let me go outside and show you. It's spinning pretty good. I don't know how many RPMs that is. Maybe 150, 200. But it's not enough to get the voltage I need. And you see the little anemometer cups spinning around pretty fast too. So I'm just gonna leave this hooked up for today and see what it does. And I'm probably just gonna take it down after today. Uh, <clears throat> if you notice, it's all white outside, so I'm not worried about water getting in there and rusting it because it's it's all frozen. Uh, but I would not leave this out during rain. But we have freezing weather predicted for the next while. And I think this watts load here is just to power the charge controller. And the charge controller will cut off its power when it gets below the set voltage for the battery, which is, I think, 11.5, and the battery's at 11.7 now. I have um, two sets of wires here. One set is going to the, the inverter, but I don't have it connected right now, so there's no extra load on the battery, just to see if I can charge the battery. All right, I have a hoverboard motor here, and then this is a sanding pad that's meant to go on a drill, but I have it chucked in my variable speed drill press. Uh, we're only gonna be using the lowest speed right now. And then I, because this is a three phase motor, okay, well, back up a little bit. I cut off the wheel. It wasn't glued on or anything, it was just kind of stuck on, so I cut it off and it just came right off. So that can go in the trash. Uh, these hoverboard motors are three phase, so I have three wires here, um, blue, yellow, green, running into a three phase bridge rectifier. So three phase wild AC goes in one side and DC comes out the other. And I have that hooked up to my voltmeter right now. So we're going to see how many volts this makes. Uh, and we'll see the RPM also. I have a, a optical RPM sensor, so I'm going to use that on this to see how fast this is spinning. Then we can get a, a volts to RPM relationship. And we'll see how this compares to the other motor that's on the... Whoops, sorry that's on the turbine. Woo, you can't see it because of focus, but it's it's out there on that utility pole. Uh, well, it's a light pole and the light isn't attached or hooked up. So the only thing on there is the wind turbine that's using power or making power in that case. So let's get this set up. Unfortunately, my tripod, I need a, a nicer tripod. This one's short, it only maxes out at like four feet. So you can't see much, unfortunately. Um, there, you can see that. All right, other stuff in my way in this room. Okay, I'm gonna turn it on real quick and turn it off because it's it's real janky, it's out of center. Uh, but you're gonna see the voltage on the meter there. So you should have seen I saw it earlier, I already had it running 40.3. Let's do it again and I'll look at it. Well, that's no good. Okay, we're gonna try this again. I have that put in volts DC this time. 
Uh, I tightened the clamp extra hard this time so it won't come off. The clamp came off last time. And I have my tachometer here with a reflective strip on the chuck. So we're going to get volts and RPMs and we can calculate the ratio between the two. All right, there's glare on that. I didn't, I don't really want to do it again. So I'm just going to do it unloaded. Um, I saw initially 704 before the glare cut out. And we're going to see how fast this goes too. So something that some purveyors of PMAs who sell them, which are modified car alternators, they'll say that there's like a, a limited amount of cogging on the motor. Well, how's that for cog free? I can just get, stick that there. can get six, seven volts, just spinning it by hand. So there's very little cogging in this, just a, a whiff of cogging. You can barely even detect it there. You can see how fine the resolution is on this too. All right, as you saw there, Come on, let go of the microphone cord. Thank you. Uh, it was making a few watts. <clears throat> you can see I'm getting barely sufficient voltage to even charge the battery. And you can see when I started two days ago, the battery was 11.81 volts, and now it's 11.92 volts. So over two days, it's increased a tenth of a volt on my battery which has no load except the charge controller running Bluetooth. Uh, right out the front of my house, right there, you can see the wind turbine is spinning. It's pretty windy. Let's see what the wind is here. Oh, noodles are ready. So the the wind here, let's go to my Accurite. All right, shut up. It is currently negative two degrees Fahrenheit. This is the polar vortex, it's just beginning. Um, so let's see what the wind speed is. Well, there's, you saw it was 18. But the wind today has been uh, pretty high. <laughs> So, what's that, 14 to 21 miles per hour gusting, gusting almost to 30. And I'm only making, it has to connect every time. I'm only, I'm only making like eight, nine volts. The highest I've ever seen is like 17 volts. And it barely charges, um, the highest watts I've seen is like 11. But that's where I am with this and I'm working on other stuff, trust me. <laughs>